Uh, okay, so this will be the second part of the analysis video. I will be going over Castle, Blights, and Calamity. The uh, other, the first part went over Plateau. So if you haven't watched that, I'll link it in the description. You can go watch. Essentially, I'll be going over all the all the cues that I use. And Castle, Blights, and Calamity, I think, are my favorite part of any percent. Um, I really like the second half, uh, but there is a lot to keep in mind, so I guess we, uh, we should get right to it. So here I went over this last time, but for the step if I use, you'll want to whistle before you enter the cutscene. This distracts the boko down below so that it's um, essentially not annoying you while you're trying to set up BLSS. Uh, so here, after this cutscene, you want to kind of run, run to the right and then kind of loop around to the left, kind of like you're kind of exiting the window diagonal left. That's because the step of spots right here, which is to the left of the window. Um, you can see I do a quick menu. Right, like I do a quick menu right there, and the reason I do that is so that the menuing for the BLSS setup is faster. Essentially, the the game has this convenience thing, like a quality of life um, feature, where if you pick up an item, the your inventory it'll default to whatever item you just picked up. So right here, um, when you pause, you're going to be initially on the quests page because you just got a bunch of quests from the old man, but in your inventory, it will default to the paraglider, um, the key items page on the paraglider specifically because you just got that from the old man. We don't want that. We want to be on the shield menu. So by pressing a d-pad um a quick menu it actually resets it to whatever um inventory page you were last on which for the whole plateau we're going to be on shield menu because um we have to do so many blss setups so here um you see the boko is down below um you want to keep the boko off screen it's not a big deal, but um, if you're falling down, you essentially want to start holding ZL before the Boko is in view. And by holding ZL early, there's no chance that you're going to target the Boko. Um, this is for the step up spot I use. You can also step up. There's the stairs like up here to the right. You can get a step up off there, and they're roughly the same speed. Here I do a jumping build SS setup, and then off we go. So for the BLSS is on like the slides on plateau, you don't go far enough to worry about speed cap. Um, the one to castle is the only one in any percent that's really long enough that you have to worry about that. Um, because if you go too fast, then Link will lose all momentum, right? He'll lose all speed. So you want to be moving as close to speed cap as possible um, without hitting speed cap. And so there's a couple of different ways to like tell if you're at speed cap. The popular ones are using this bomb trail. Right? So there are these like holes in the bomb trail. And essentially what you uh, so it's like say this part is a hole in the bomb trail, you can see the the sky. And the blue makes a hole. So when those look like they're not moving, that's when you're pretty close to speed cap. Um, the other way is using how far off center of this mini map um, to tell how close you are to speed cap. I don't really like that one. Whenever you get a world load, Link will move back to the center for a bit. So I don't know. That never really seemed that useful. 
Um, I'll be linking to Pierre made a BLSS video. That's pretty long, but if you want to improve your slides, uh, definitely go give that a watch because Tapir is very good at slides um, and you'll probably learn something. But yeah. Uh, what I do, for, okay, so for any percent, I actually don't use either of those uh, because the slide is always the same and my flicking speed is actually pretty consistent. The step up is also consistent. So um, essentially, I know how long it takes for me to reach speed cap um, by the distance I've traveled. And so I actually look at the minimap, but I look at a landmark. Essentially, what I do is I flick cons like uh, constantly until I reach like the edge of plateau. So it's like right after mag, you see the edge of plateau. That's when I stop. You can see, boom, past mag, I turn around. So now I should be pretty close to speed cap. And now that I'm at speed cap, it's just keeping the speed. And so to do that, you just kind of periodically turn around and flick. Um, I'm looking up here to re help reduce world loads. Not really sure how big of a difference that makes, but uh, you might as well. Because essentially you're just heading north with the slide. And here you just want to be to the right of this big pillar. But like very slightly to the right of it. Now, this part where you jump out of this slide is very important. Um, the gate is like down here. So I actually jump out early. And that's important, right? You'd think, oh, you move faster during BLSS, so you'd want to jump out later. But you actually get some pretty big world loads if you jump out late. Um, and those world loads can make the gate load in um, more often. And so it's actually, and you also lose time just because the world loads take a while. So you actually want to jump out early because it's going to be faster on average and you have a lower chance of loaded gate. So yeah, here, uh, essentially, uh, come on, <laughs> let's back up a bit. There's this wall, I guess I'll use the, the pen, they have it, this wall. And then this, uh, like this wall. And you want to jump out kind of in the middle. So let's jump out like here. Obviously, it, it depends. Like, we'll see. But uh, essentially, it's in between these two. Uh, the midpoint. That's where you want to jump out. Now here, you kind of glide into the, the gate. Everything's going to be unloaded when you get in. Uh, you can't really avoid that, so you need to be able to maneuver this out of bounds section. You can wait for things to load in, but that's slow. Um, you'll also be waiting for these Lizolfos to load in too, which is kind of a pain. So if you wait, it's actually more likely for the Lizolfos to, to bother you, I would say. So yeah, you've got this. Now there is a wall right here. There's a wall. There's a gap between this wall and a fence. So you want to run far enough down that you can jump through this gap between the wall and the fence. If you jump too far left, you climb the wall. Uh, if you jump too far right, Link will climb the fence, which is actually fine. Um, if you're like right next to it and you jump at it, like you're holding towards the fence and you jump, it will climb the fence. And then if you hit jump again, Link will just jump off the fence. So it's actually fine. But optimally, of course, you'll you'll learn the distance, the spacing. It's muscle memory for me. But essentially, you just run down pretty far and jump through this hole. But yeah, for me, I would say the rule of thumb is run further down. Um, 
because yeah, if you're spamming jump here, then kind of jumping on this fence is fine. So here, um, there's Lozolfos to the right. Want to keep them off screen. So enemy is actually um, act differently when they're off screen versus when they're on screen. So if you keep the camera pointed away from them, they're actually less likely to see you. And that's important here to keep these guys from harassing you. So keep the camera pointed far enough left that they're off screen. Here you glide. There's a pillar here. Just glide to the left of that. Uh, this moblin isn't always going to be loaded in when you're gliding here. If it's not, then just spam shield, unequip, and reequip until it loads in. You want to headshot this moblin. The old strat was like walking slowly behind it with the, with the claymore. And the hard part about that is not alerting the moblin. Uh, so this is actually really safe, really easy. And it's faster. So yeah, go headshot the moblin. Drop down, grab the claymore. And yeah. You actually kind of want to shoot the moblin earlier. Um, before dropping down, because you need to wait for this moblin to get up before you can sneak straight it anyway. Um, and so yeah, you might as well shoot it early and then... When you grab the claymore, you will guaranteed, or you'll be guaranteed to have this moblin ready to sneak strike. Yeah, you drop down, and you can't sneak strike it until this, where it does the like surprised animation. Now you can sneak strike it. Uh, spam shield, unequip, reequip until the claymore loads in. Grab it. Go for the sneak strike immediately. Um, there's a chance the castle cutscene loads in while you're doing this sneak strike it, with the old strat of like walking slowly that was bad there was a chance that killed the run um you alert the moblin but with the headshot strat it actually doesn't matter even if the uh, sneak strike gets like interrupted by the cutscene you just go for the sneak strike again like it it's totally blind now you grab this claymore Cutscene happens here. So after this, you want to throw sprint um, over to the, the crate. There's, of course, the razor shroom crate here uh, if you need it. In this case, I don't. I have a ton of fish. Uh, but yeah, you want to throw sprint here because if you normal sprint, the Lizolfos can hear you. And so it's safer to throw sprint. Um, the difference in speed is... Throw sprinting is 80% the speed of regular sprinting. Um, so yeah, the distance we travel here is so short that it does not make a difference. And it's safer to throw sprint, so just do that. Now here, um, the way I like to climb this is, you see the stairs? There's like this broken section on the stairs. Aim for that, and you essentially just like do a running jump onto this part of the wall where it's like below this uh, and then link will do a like a the step up animation what's it's not actually the step up animation but it does like a, a climb step thing um and essentially it's a a way to get up onto the stairs without using extra stamina so this is the animation that we're trying to avoid when we ZL hop onto the wall. Um, in this case, it's good to actually use it because it gives us enough height to, uh, to actually climb up on top of it without using extra stamina. Do that. And here... Okay, so you can hear the Lizolfos are pretty close to the left. You want to kind of... Stay close to this wall and then keep your camera pointed at the wall. So you can see, like, the, here's the stairs. 
right? You kind of want to stay on the right half of the stairs, and then you throw sprint. And so the way to throw sprint is actually you start off with R and B. You press R and B, right, to initiate the throw sprint. And normally, what you would do is you just mash R and B. But it turns out to get a really consistent throw sprint, you want to initiate it with uh, an RB press, and then you start holding whistle, and then once you're holding whistle, you just spam R and B, and it's really easy to get a, a very consistent throw sprint. Because um, the whistle input will actually cancel like the, the throw uh, animation. So it's like, yeah, it's very consistent. And then the important part is that you start with RNB before you hold whistle, and that's so that you don't accidentally alert like enemies with the whistle. Um, and then you want to also end the throw sprint with an RNB input after you've let go of whistle, because if you don't, then Link will start whistling um, at the end of it, and then you've kind of ruined it. So yeah, just make sure that you begin and end with the throw sprint input. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just hold whistle. And then here, yeah, you camera face to the right. Kind of just make sure to use stamina so that by the time you are at this ancient arrow chest, you have almost no stamina. Okay, so here for this Lizolfus, you want to start whistling pretty early on. Um, I found that if you alert the Lizolfus later, there's a chance that you actually don't get the sneak strike prompt immediately, and you have to wait for a second or two to be able to sneak strike it. So yeah, you whistle sprint, um, and then you sprint, pull out a bomb. So here, you want to sure you're below this, right? If you poke your head out, Zolfus will notice you, so you want to throw the bomb from below that. Um, and where you throw this bomb actually matters um, with how the, the Zolfus is going to chase it. So I'm using a circle bomb. And the reason a circle bomb is faster here is because you don't have to menu over to square bomb at all. Um, so it saves time menuing over to square bomb and back to circle bomb, but a square bomb is more convenient because, um, it doesn't roll, so it's, uh, it's not going to get kicked around as much, but if you throw the bomb in the right spot, then you should be fine anyway with the circle bomb, but yeah, essentially right here. Okay, so you see where I throw it? I throw it here, right? It's kind of okay. So here is the the core, like the edge, where the right wall meets this doorway wall. Don't throw it into this corner. If you throw it too far to the right into the corner, the Lizolfos will actually take a loop around and kind of kick it from this side of it, and so. Doing that makes it awkward because you're going to have to get the sneak strike over here, which is fine. You'll be able to get a sneak strike, but it will drop the weapon like kind of inside the wall, which one has a chance of just dropping the bomb or no, dropping the boomerang like out of bounds. But uh, it's also like just harder to pick up the boomerang because. Yeah, you, do, you don't, like, the shield's going to be here, dropping the boomerang here against the wall is going to drop it closer to the, the shield. So yeah, you want to make sure to kind of throw it at the middle of this, uh, this, like, wood pillar. Um, I found that is pretty consistent. And you'll be able to get an instant seek trick. So here, yeah, you just run, and you can see I got, uh, yeah, I got the sneak strike prompt like as soon as 
I was like close to the Lizalfos right there. And yeah, you can see that the Lizalfos is like attacking the bomb and you sneak strike it like in the middle of the doorway, which is like close to or it's closer to the the cooking pot than if the Lizalfos was over here. So yeah, you sneak strike, walk a little bit this way. So that you're closer to the boomerang than the shield. And that will make it so that you can pick up the boomerang easily. You want to walk instead of sprint here. So that you can turn around um, quicker. If you sprint, you'll have to do a slow turnaround animation. Now here, light the arrow. Shoot at the cooking pot. Um, if you're doing 3 inch an arrow... Right, castle blights calamity right so for three engine arrow castle you actually want to have two arrows right here at this point because if you pick up a bundle of five in the moblin room that gives you seven arrows and seven arrows means that you have the perfect amount for blights and then after blights you don't have any regular arrows so when you pick up the bomb arrows it auto equips them so it saves like one menu um, but I like to have the bomb arrows like auto equip so that it makes the calamity fight like really smooth and it's like essentially you just want the calamity fight to be consistent. So yeah, if you have an extra arrow sometimes, um, it can throw you off. If you're doing six inch arrow castle, you want to keep the arrow, so don't shoot it or shoot it and pick it up because essentially there's like a malice eye that you have to shoot or that it's more optimal to shoot the malice eye with the, your extra arrow. But yeah, here um, I actually cook only four ingredients. Um, you see I, I cook the four carps. I don't even bother with the porgy. That's because you only need seven points of attack up and four carps is enough for seven points. I think it's eight points, right? Because each carp is two. So the minimum threshold to cook a, a level three meal is seven points. And then any extra ingredients uh, act as filler. Uh, and the filler will increase the timer on it. So here I cook four attack up ingredients. And that gives me a 3 minute, 20 second attack up timer. For me, that's enough. Um, if you aren't as confident on the blight, on like blights and calamity, you will want to make sure to cook with 5 ingredients. But that depends on your comfort level in the bosses. Um, and cooking with 5 attack up ingredients is different from cooking with like four attack up ingredients and one Hyrule Bass or like one filler because attack up ingredients will add 50 seconds to the timer whereas um, the filler will only add 30 seconds. So keep that in mind. You can figure out how much time you need when you uh, do Blights and Calamity. You can just check. Okay, so here I, I pre-turn my camera. I want it like bird's eye view essentially facing this way or like so that I can climb this wall. Uh, to climb the wall, you kind of just press the left stick down and then once Link climbs it up or climbs up it, you immediately, uh, you hold ZL and down on the left stick and then press B. That way after Link climbs up, he'll let go of the wall and then he's gonna start walking towards the wall and that way he'll stay up there if you didn't hold down and you pressed b he would just slide off yeah, here you want to <clears throat> put link in the corner and then the visual cues for this clip um this is a scope clip same thing as sor clip uh, camera angle, very lenient, facing angle, pretty strict. So for the camera angle, 
<clears throat> you line up this time, so 5.15. Uh, a lot of people like to line up the zero on the, the time with this gate. You can see there's like a gate right there. This like bold white line or white dash. I don't do that. I actually line up the 515 with this gate. So it's like the top of the 515 is kind of, you draw a line there and it's it's aligned with the, the top gate. But again, <clears throat> camera angle is a lot more lenient. So there are multiple cues for that. But then for the facing angle, you actually use the point of Link's hair. Where you see Link's hair kind of essentially goes like this. Uh, and so this is like the point that's uh, that's farthest forward. It's like the the point of his of his hair. Um, that you want to align with this edge of the wall. Um, so here you get in position and then you do a, a quick, like a light tap down left so that this point lines up with that. And then you should be good to clip. And yeah, I do it super quick. So you won't even be able to see, right? I don't even let Link's hair like, or Link settle down so you can see the cue, which is why I had to go over it before. Now here. Uh, well, I guess essentially three inch narrow castle is very hard to get a really fast time, uh, because there's just more going on, uh, more tricks that you have to hit. The out of bounds section is kind of hard. Um, and so setting up that clip, I do it instantly, right? Uh, there's no hesitation. The longer you take to set up the clip, uh, to get the cues correct, the less time you're saving. Uh, three inch and arrow castle saves roughly twenty seconds over six inch and arrow, and is a lot harder, both in castle with the out of bounds section and in calamity. So you know, keep that in mind. I definitely think you can get some crazy fast times with six inch and arrow castle. Uh, but yeah, here we are. <clears throat> you clip out. Now you want to glide back, kind of in a straight line. Um, this is while you do it while you're turning the camera because you, you know, need to turn the camera this way to be able to midair that way. But you're also trying to avoid some walls that, uh, there's like the hallway to the left. If you glide out further, you're not going to hit the, the hallway and you might as well do it because yeah, you need to turn or you need to turn the camera around. Now here. So <clears throat> let's do this. Uh, the cue here is this thing in the background. Line up the the throw aim. And the reason you want to throw aim here is because you need to turn around. Um, you could use bow aim, but we actually don't need any height, or you don't need that much height here. And having too much height is a problem because there are water planes everywhere. And so if you get a launch that sends you too high, you get stuck in the water. But yeah, here you want to throw aim and line up the throw aim with the left side of this. It's not super strict. You can see I'm like not on the left side of it, but I'm lined up with like the left half of this. or Not half, but like the left side right here. Anywhere in this range, you would be good to go. Now this midair, so the reason midairs are hard um, is because you need to have really good control of Link's momentum. Because if you're doing a front hop wind bomb, the momentum forward from a front hop is standard, right? It's always the same. So just having different timings for like placing circle and square and entering bullet time, like that's gonna 
line up the bombs correctly. Whereas if you're doing a midair, you need to control the momentum to be able to space out the bombs properly. So it's really important that you keep Link's momentum like consistent and the same. Um, and then the, another hard part about this out of bounds section is that you know there is like walls and water everywhere so you need to make sure not to get enough or get enough height but not too much height uh you don't want to go too far left or right because then you'll hit the walls stuff like that so yeah here throw aim glide forward a little bit this kind of smooths out link's momentum if you go from a throw aim to glide um, and you don't do a little glide forward, Link's momentum is going to be a little bit weird. Um, so I like to glide forward a little bit and then come to a stop. There's two uh, like main ways to do a midair. Going from full stop to holding forward and going from a full glide to, to stopping. I like to go from stopping to holding forward. I think it gives me better control of Link's momentum, but yeah, that's that's the midder I'll be going over. Here, you want to go from full stop and make sure you're fully stopped, uh, just so that it's you know consistent. And then you place the circle and then move Link forward. Uh, it's you know a little bit forward left, but essentially just place circle move Link forward, enter bullet time. You want to enter bullet time pretty soon after. Um, and then you place square and then immediately detonate. And so the reason I do this kind of, this timing is so that it gives Link like a, a weak enough launch, but with enough height to make it onto the hallway. Now I used to do a different midair that would land me over here and then you wind bomb up from there the wind bomb from here is surprisingly hard because this slope makes it so that the circle bomb will roll and you need a back sight from here to make it up to the uh the moblin room and then yeah essentially uh it's slower as well because it takes longer for the Moblin to load in if you do a wind bomb from there. So I've started landing up on the hallway. But yeah, essentially, uh, enter bullet time pretty soon after you place circle. And you know, it's not immediate or anything, but you'll be able to see from my wind bomb kind of how long to wait. And then, yeah, you place square and then immediately detonate. And the immediate detonation is what gives you more height. But you may you want to make sure that you don't get too much height. So it's kind of tricky. <clears throat> now here, I actually lined up the bombs. Kind of, It's kind of scary because you want to avoid a dead angle. Because if you go too fast in speed cap, that's really bad. And you see here... Uh, yeah, the way the bombs were lined up. It gave me a really fast launch, so I was worried that this was gonna speed cap, but it didn't. You can see I'm like barely under the water. I guess you can't see the water, but I was very close to killing the run right there. <clears throat> now here, you want to um, want to land. Uh, there's a like picture frame on every other wall or like section of the wall so you see this one's got a picture frame this one doesn't the next one will have a picture frame and so on as you go down the hallway um i like to stand on the so this is the first picture frame the lasolfos is one to the right um so the first picture frame and then one left of that the hallway is kind of awkward because you need to find a spot to stand to get bullet time. I would suggest just playing around with it. Finding a spot that works for you. 
of the spot I like to stand is kind of halfway between the middle of this wall section and this pillar part of it. You can see I'm standing there. Um, the wind bomb is slightly right of Cardinal. Um, you see I line up my throw aim with this, like these bricks. Uh, this is a fairly standard wind bomb. It's just normal placements. Um, as long as you're not too far left, you're fine. Because if you're too far left, then Link gets stuck in the water. And yeah, you, you can't land in the hallway. If you're too far right, as long as you have enough height, you can glide into the hallway. So yeah, this is a, just a normal wind bomb because you have a decent amount of height from the hallway. Yeah, you're like pretty high up already. And so here, you want a pump glider and then glide in. And then yeah, you're in. So I'm actually just gonna, you know, just so we can see the whole thing kind of fluidly. I should have shown that at the start. And right there, you're actually waiting for the um, bomb to recharge anyway. Which is one of the nice parts about the hallway. Okay, so I'll, I'll just show this part. This is what I should have done for the other thing. But this moblin room is actually kind of a pain to learn and practice. <clears throat> like, there's a lot going on. But yeah, here... So you sprint in. Normally this Moblin isn't loaded. In my PB it's kind of weird because the Moblin is loaded instantly. Um, so normally that's not the case. You want to sprint and then pause while you're sprinting. Because the strat I'm doing, you need the Moblin to notice you pretty early and start walking at you. Um, otherwise you won't be able to get the Sneak Strike prompt. So here, because the Moblin's normally not loaded, uh, at doing any menuing here is actually not a time loss. It's just waiting for that Moblin to load in. So you open the menu, eat your attack up food, which if you're comfortable with the fights, it's fine, right? 320 here is, I'm very comfortable with that. So you eat that uh, and then drop the bow. But yeah, if you if you can't do the blights and like blights and calamity that fast, then you'll want to eat the food later. Um, at this point, you only have half a heart, so you'll need to eat at some point before the next wind bomb. So you can do it now or before the wind bomb. But yeah, drop the bow. The reason you drop the bow is to avoid the bow switching tutorial. So that's like a two second time save. Um, and normally that menuing is done while you wait. So yeah, you wouldn't lose time doing it. Now here, okay, so essentially you're trying to throw the bomb into the room, blow it up in the Moblin's face, and then you run around, grab the arrows, sneak strike the Moblin. Right here, this doorway it's kind of deceptive, but if we look, it's like, oh look, a very wide doorway, right? Look at this doorway, super wide. You actually can't really like stand because, you know, it's not loaded in properly, but like it gets cut off quite a bit. So it's not nearly as wide as you, as it looks. And so essentially you want to just stand in the middle and you want to move pretty far into the room or at least farther than you'd think that you can move. Maybe like around here. Because, uh, well, we'll see in a second, but there's this curtain that loads in that's like there. It extends pretty far into the room. So you're actually the Moblin won't be able to see you even if you're standing here 
even though it looks like you're inside the room. And if you throw the bomb from like back here into the room, it's just going to hit this wall, this curtain, and then it's going to fall down right next to you and you won't be able to blow it up. So to avoid that, you just move a little bit further into the room. So this is takes some practice, but yeah, just center of this unloaded section and I'll, you know, go as far into the room as you can without getting noticed. So let me just, yeah, okay, here we are. See, so this is the this is the curtain I was talking about. So yeah, you can't throw it through this curtain because it's a solid wall. But here, essentially, throw the bomb in, blow it up. the The moblin's gonna be like stunned. And this gives you enough time to run into the room. You want to make sure not to like take too tight of a line along this curtain, otherwise you're going to climb it. And um, yeah, if you climb that, like it's not stunned for long enough that you can get away with that. So you need to make sure to take a kind of a curve around this curtain. But yeah, you blow it up, run in, grab these arrows, and then like as you're going behind the moblin, And then sneak strike. So there's this funny thing where the reason you want this moblin to notice as soon as possible is because if you alert the moblin too late, um, you don't give it enough time to walk at you, um, and you blow up the bomb in its face too early because of that, it's not going to give you a sneak strike prompt. I don't know why this happens, but yeah, like if I alerted the moblin when I was in the doorway instead, and then immediately threw the bomb in, blew it up, ran around him, this sneak strike prompt just would never appear. Um, if that happens, it's actually fine. You can switch. If, you've, if you ate your attack up food, our boomerang has a ton of extra durability, so you can actually switch to that and kill the moblin. So it's not the end of the world, but to avoid that, just make sure to alert the moblin sooner rather than later. So yeah, here, you want to sneak strike, unequip the claymore, and then switch to mag. Um, you unequip the claymore because that's one menu to the left, and then when you pick up EOD, which is what we want to have equipped going into Blights, it's going to auto-equip. And so normally that would be like three menus to the right. So you save on menuing by doing that. And then you switch to mag. Of course, to mag the uh, the bow. So here, if you have gyro, um, you can do a really fast flick down once you've um, magged it. And it will... Actually, this ledge right here, as long as you don't move it up at all, um, this ledge will kind of shoot it out towards you. As you can see that here. Right. And that's good because it clears the moblin parts. So you, you really don't want to pick up moblin parts. That would be slow, right? You lose like two seconds per moblin part you pick up. And so by doing that, you clear it. It's a pretty small time save because you could just like, you know, move it towards you without gyro and it would be fine, but it looks cool as well. And yeah, it launches it so that you can kind of just already start running in the right direction. Yeah. Now here, you want to climb this on the right side of the wall. If you go too far left, there's like rubble on it that makes it hard to climb. Whereas you should be able to just see it's like this part. If you are climbing it too far left, Link will actually climb up onto this and then let go of the wall. So don't do that. Two jumps should make it to the top. You want full stamina here before the climb 
so that in case you don't get two jumps up, uh, you have enough stamina for the third jump. Yeah, so here, there's actually a new wind bomb from right here. That's slightly faster, more risky, right? Because you're closer to like the roof that you're trying to wind bomb over. So you need a better wind bomb from here. But that is a slight time save that was proposed after I got this run. But yeah, here. I just run over here. I like to climb this using the left stick. Um, I find doing that makes Link's position on this more consistent. He'll always be on the right side of the, like, whatever you call this thing. Um, so you can see he climbs it, and now he's standing on the right half of it. If you did a jump to climb this, he'd be standing more centered sometimes. And the visual cue here is um, you've got, you got this, right? That is cardinal. Um, if you lined it up with the, the castle, like, like bridge wall thing, that would be cardinal. Do it slightly left of that. You can see here, uh, like, like a slight angle. And then here you just do like a, oh, make sure you're looking down or up so that you don't get lag stopped because this is a very laggy area. Also, don't eat during this one bomb. So if you forgot to eat and you already did the jump circle bomb place, do not eat there. Um, or you're, you're going to have to like exit the wind bomb and eat and then try it again because essentially doing that menuing makes the game lag and then you're not going to be able to get the launch but I eat earlier anyway so it doesn't really matter so this is a height wind bomb uh, you don't really need that much height but having extra doesn't hurt uh, it's you know a little further to to fall but it's fine and going too low is pretty bad, so just do a, a normal height wind bomb. Now drop down. So here I use um demon setup for wind blade skip. I find it's really consistent. You'll be able to find cues for that somewhere in the Discord, I think. Uh the video quality here is not good enough for me to show my cue. But here, essentially, what you want to do, you buffer the first one with a, a weapon swing, and then you just buffer the rest of them with the jumps. So if you're spamming jump here, um, Link's not going to be able to move before he does the next jump. You just spam jump and then hold the direction you want to go. So it's two right hops, a backflip, and then a left hop. And then here you can pre-aim the camera as you're doing those jumps so that you're facing the right direction. And then pause. Make sure you're holding all the way forward before you unpause. That's very important. Um, wind blight skip is a very consistent trick, except when you're on PB pace and your hands are shaking. Um, and it's a really sad place to lose a run. So. Yeah, just make sure you're holding forward um, completely before you, you unpause. Okay, so that was Castle, right? There's a lot in Castle. But now we're moving into Blights. <clears throat> now here... Um, yeah. uh, I'll be linking... So I'll be linking Noman's tutorial on Blights as well. Because that's really good. He goes over like everything. Um, he also has the uh, the drawing on screen. So it's like he like points out all the cues. So definitely go check that out. But yeah, here we go. 
um, you know, two hits with the EOD. Um, you make sh you want to make sure that you're not too far forward. Essentially, this circle around Water Blight is the no-go zone, right? If you enter that too early, um, you're going to get a different attack. You want the, the lunge attack, so just make sure you walk forward a little bit so that you can hit Water Blight's face, but don't go too far forward. Uh, so ideally, you do two hits, and then you immediately get a lunge attack. Um, it's bad RNG if you don't, because you want to be able to start spinning as soon as possible, because you actually get to get triple hits, hitting both the arm and the body. Whereas if you have to wait for that attack, which you need that attack to happen, to be able to like do the phase, um, get enough hits, then yeah, you're just losing time. So you can, if you, if you don't get the lunge attack immediately, just do an extra hit. I think right here, yeah. See, I get three hits, and then I get the lunge. Okay. Now here, kind of walk to the left to avoid the attack, but then you want to get triple hits. So here's. Here's the main body. Here's the arm, right? This part is the arm. You're trying to hit the hand and the main body, but essentially you get double hits by facing away from something and then doing this two-handed spin. So we're trying to get double hits on the body and then single hits on the, the arm. And I find this is more consistent for me than trying to get double hits on the hand and single hits on the body. But some people still do that. Um, but yeah, essentially, you walk this way, and you want to stand like around here, closer to the body. And then once like Water Blight stops moving, you can then walk this way a little bit, start doing the spin, um, and essentially you want to be kind of kind of standing here when you're doing the spin, when you're starting it, and then you move back this way so that you're halfway between the body and the, the hand. But yeah, you don't want to move too close to the body, otherwise Link will stop like the angle that Link is like spinning will make it so that he will not hit the hand anymore. So yeah, uh, we'll see. Actually, get really good triple hits here. Uh, you also want to move the camera so that you can see all of this, right? Um, so that you can help line yourself up. You can see that I kind of lined up the the arm is kind of straight down straight up and down with the camera and the the body is in the middle but yeah you can see link is like it's getting double hits here and single hits here let's watch this again walk over slight walking back towards the camera and then start the spin and now slowly move a little bit back just so that you're in the middle with the two, and then boom. Once you're getting the triple hits, just like don't move. You should be fine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. Right here, I throw the so I throw the claymore down. You throw it down so that it doesn't go far away, um, and then you switch to Claymore, or like the Claymore in the first slot. The reason you want to do that is just because normally here, you would have to menu three to the left to get to the Claymore. If you throw your weapon, it doesn't take any durability, and now you're unequipped 
So one to the right will get you to the Claymore. It's a very slight optimization, but I find it's easier to do one to the right instead of three to the left. Um, I, I used to mess up three to the left a lot here, so that's why I like the, the weapon throw more. Now right here, you can either get a um, you know, water blight to move to the entrance or to the throne. The entrance is faster by a little bit. So I got that here. Um, yeah, you essentially walk up, aim your headshots, do two. But you want to be pretty close when you're doing that. And then once you get the second headshot, the reason the, the entrance is faster is because you get to immediately start spinning. If you're at the throne, um, it takes longer for uh, Water Blight to fall down, whereas like you'll be able to get hits faster than Water Blight falls when you're at the, the entrance because it's like closer to you. So right here, it's three hits, then slam. And then this, you want to essentially just pre-aim your camera and then like start holding ZR as soon as possible to get this extra headshot. Right, because there's a little bit of time where Link is drawing the bow, and that little bit of time should be enough to let you actually aim. So, one, two, three. Uh, you can also kind of see which way Water Blight's going to get up by how his body is um, oriented on the ground. You can see that right here. The tail is over here and it goes this way. So, um, yeah, you'll get used to it, but essentially when he gets up, the tail will be over here and then the body will be this way. So it's the same orientation. There are some spots where it gets a little funky, but you do have enough time to like readjust your aim during that bow like draw time. But yeah, you want to start holding ZR as soon as possible, right? Because this is pretty tight. And so you want to be able to release your arrow as quickly as you can, otherwise it'll void out. And now, it doesn't really matter where you stand, just get two headshots and it should end the phase. Now, going into Thunder or Fireblight, immediately do spins. Um, you can actually wait a little bit on this first one. And by doing that, it kind of gives Fireblight a little bit more time to start an attack. And if Fireblight starts an attack, then. Um, these hits won't knock them back, which makes it easier to do the next part. So right here, I didn't have that happen. He gets knocked pretty far back, but here you, you know, you do the your first spin, three hits, and then slam. Uh, if you okay, something important is if you actually get an extra hit on this um this small arm during this first spin. You want to wait for Link to finish three rotations. If you slam early, then it won't stun Fireblight. So yeah, it's like, even if you get that extra hit, you still have to wait a little bit before you can slam. And then here you immediately switch to Royal Guards Claymore. But the thing is, essentially... Here you you're gonna be ending the phase, right? You get four hits on the Fireblight's body, and then a, a slam, and that'll do it. So the fast strat here, you could do three hits and then slam and then jump attack to the the final hit, and that works. Um, right? Because if you do three and then slam, it will knock Fireblight down. That's very safe. And this is also safe, but essentially the fast way of doing it is getting an extra hit on the small arm. For this, you kind of want to just 
position yourself halfway between the uh, the main body and the small arm. Also, if you um, if you just wait for your stamina to refill enough, you can just do four spin hits on the main body and then slam. And because you're ending the phase there, it doesn't matter that Fireblight doesn't get stunned because it'll just move to the next phase. But you see here, four hits then slam. Um, <clears throat> you're kind of you kind of need to move pretty far. Like you need to commit to this sometimes to get the hit on this small arm, depending on how far Fireblight gets uh, knocked back. <clears throat> okay, so here we are, phase two. Um, you switch to boomerang, place a bomb in the center. I don't know why some people place the square bomb here. The type of bomb doesn't make a difference, so menuing over to square bomb just loses time. So just, you know, place circle bomb in the middle. And then look at where fireblight goes. Now here you want to stand in between Fireblight and the middle of the room. All right, this way you can see uh, Fireblight is facing the middle. Uh, if you're standing too far back, Fireblight will be f Fireblight always faces you. So if you're closer to the middle, then Fireblight will be facing the middle. But if you're closer to the outside of the room, Fireblight will be turned around. You want to wait for the bomb to be behind Fireblight, and then you blow it up. Um, and this is all to make it so that essentially the Fireblight will fall down in front of you with its shoulders facing you. So right here, boom, blow up the thing. You've got the, the shoulders facing you. Um, he's facing up. His, his head is up. Do two hits, jump, cancel the second thing and then throw it uh throw the boomerang this is to make the menuing slightly faster later in thunderblade and it also makes it so that because throwing the boomerang deals a little bit of extra damage um it makes this require one one less hit from the the claymore yeah throw and then here, all right, so one cycle is actually pretty hard to do, but essentially what we're aiming for is hits on the on the big arm and hits on the main body. So here it's kind of like um this is like water blight triple hits. you want to. Stand like stand around here, right? And then well, like stand on this side of him and then go hold hold and move a little bit away. And this is just to set up double hits. Or like essentially you wanna be going I guess parallel to his body. And then once you start getting hits, you actually want to then move this way. But you don't want to move too far in. If you get too close to Fireblade's main body, you will actually stop getting uh, a hit on the big arm. Right, so here... Yeah, like th this is kind of awkward as well. Um, the timing for when you target Fireblight actually matters because look at the angle that Link is spinning, right? He's spinning so that he's able to hit both the, uh, like he, he's spinning, I don't know how to explain this, but like he, it isn't a flat circle. He is aiming his sword at the uh, at the main body, and because you're standing like in the middle of the big arm 
and the main body you're standing like in between it you're able to hit both with this kind of angle that <clears throat> the link is spinning at but if you move too close to the main body then he he's still angled up at the main body here but you won't be able to hit the the right arm or like the big arm so yeah essentially just make sure not to move too far in and then oh that okay i had just said when you target fire blight matters so i like to target fire blight after i start getting hits like after he gets up that's when i target so right here one two th and then boom target and then this will now start to get double hits and then you move slightly up and then boom that should get it but one cycle is pretty hard okay so here uh you know it's pretty standard just make sure you're getting your jump cancel there and it doesn't work without it so at this point if you've already know how to do blights then like you should be doing that anyway this one just make sure to get double hits now here um i don't know you you want to get a, a double hit here one hit and then double there i like to target thunderblight to help get the the double hit there kind of start the spin and then target after the first hit you know jump and throw the claymore I think this jump saves a little bit maybe if not it looks cooler so whatever um, now phase two is pretty simple Right, you go grab your boomerang, and so this is where it saves time. Essentially, if you threw that boomerang earlier, you don't have to menu over to the boomerang here because after throwing the claymore at Thunderblight, you're now empty handed, and so picking up the boomerang will auto equip it. So that's the slight time save there. Now, you wait for the fourth. And then you can, like, the fourth pillar to fall, and then you can throw your boomerang. Now, headshot. At this point, you want to grab the boomerang and try to hit Thunderblade as soon as possible, but it's kind of awkward because if you hit Thunderblade super early, there's a chance that his body is, like, ragdolled in a way that he can, like, get up super high. So there have been times where I actually wasn't able to hit Thunderblight after he got up. So that can be awkward, but... <clears throat> Boom. Uh, just, you know, essentially standard double hits. Uh, target after the first hit. Generally gives me pretty good double hits. And now Calamity. Okay, Calamity. Calamity is very, very hard um, to learn, but is very consistent once you practice it a lot. Unless you get really bad, like, Calamity movement, which currently we don't know why that happens. Um, if Calamity doesn't give you a laser, it's there are things you can do um so that you don't lose the run but you're going to lose time regardless right so it it's very awkward if calamity doesn't give you a laser but it's not the end of the world if you play it correctly then the run isn't dead um but yeah calamity should be super consistent um like, you should practice this enough that it's, like, you're very confident in it. Because it's, it's super fast. It should always be the same. Start off. Um, 
you know, flurry rush. Switch to the boomerang. With the, uh, it's seven hits, but essentially, oh, I guess I should mention. Here you want to start strafing left immediately so that you're like closer. Essentially the, the bombers are like back left. So by strafing left, as you're waiting for Calamity to give you the attack, you're getting closer to the bombers slightly. <clears throat> now here, uh, run as fast as possible. Right, so use up all your stamina. Um, essentially, you're trying to make it past this circle. It's like this is the point where Calamity will be forced to give you a laser. So if you're like sprinting over here, you should get a laser every time. If you don't run far enough away quick enough, then you will get Calamity moving at you, and that's really bad but you should never have that happen as long as you run away at the start, like, super fast. So you see uh, Calamity, boom. Uh, turn the camera during the text box. Uh, if you have bomb arrows, for some reason, if you have bomb arrows already, it makes this kind of awkward because you don't actually have that that time to turn the camera. But yeah, once you grab it, you now just hold ZL to target Calamity, and because there's a laser, you should be able to get like two free headshots. Uh, I think it's actually three free headshots if you're like going rapid fire. And now you're holding straight left and ZL while you know shooting arrows. And the way I get to the Claymore. Uh, I actually messed it up in this run, but normally it's like essentially five shots with the bow while you're holding left. You should make it to the claymore. Uh, Tapir has a cue, like a visual cue for when you're at the claymore. I never learned it, but but yeah, normally five five shots when you're holding straight left. You should be at the claymore after the fifth one, and then you just um you know, stop shooting to pick it up. You just, like, let go of... How did... Do you have to let go of ZL to pick it up? You might. Um, but essentially, just pause firing to pick it up and then continue shooting headshots. Right here, you should get a laser. And if you get the laser, you know, obviously you get two headshots and while the while the laser is charging and so you should only have one bomb arrow left if you've done things properly like if you've shot bomb arrows as quick as you could you will have one bomb arrow left that means you <clears throat> did it optimally but obviously you need to get a certain number of headshots so make sure you're hitting enough um if you miss one headshot, you're fine. Two headshots, you're fine. Three headshots, um, I believe you're still fine. Oh, I actually don't remember. It's been a while. But I'm pretty sure it's you can miss three. And if you miss four, you're going to have to um, do an extra hit with the boomerang or like throw it at the end. I might be wrong about that. It might be three missed and then you're gonna have to worry but but yeah you have to hit like seven headshots you can hit three at the start for free if you practice it a lot like just because laser charge <clears throat> it should like be very consistent where uh calamity's head is gonna be and then laser charge at the end you get two free headshots there so that's five headshots you should be able to hit every single time now you just need to hit two extra bomb arrow headshots as you're moving. Um, so yeah, with practice, this part becomes super 
super easy, right? It's very consistent. So just keep practicing. If you don't get a laser here, right, if Calambi keeps on dancing on you, once you realize that Calamity is not going to give you the laser, switch to Ancient Arrows, do one headshot. And at this point, you probably have like three bomb arrows left. So switch to Ancient Arrows, do one headshot, switch back to bomb arrows, shoot bomb arrows, see if um, Calamity is going to give you a laser. And then if not, you shoot like one or two bomb arrows, switch back to Ancient Arrows, go for an Ancient Arrow headshot, and then switch back to bomb arrows. <clears throat> so the theory here is that every time you stun him with an Ancient Arrow, there's a chance he goes for a laser. And if you get that laser, you're good. You can continue um, Calambia like normal. If you don't get the laser, then, uh, you know, you want to make sure to wait a little bit just in case. Because if you shoot him with like three ancient arrows in a row, there's a chance that he was going to give you a laser. And then you interrupted him with the ancient arrow headshot. And so that will uh, actually prevent him from doing the laser. So that's why you want to switch back and forth. It's not optimal, but it's like the best way to approach it, I think. Um, and you'll lose like maybe five seconds. So better five seconds than the run. But yeah, it's very annoying. Um, and so sometimes five seconds would be um, enough to kill the run at that point. But yeah, essentially here you want to parry this laser as close to Calamity as possible. And the reason for that is uh, because the closer you are to Calamity, the less distance you have to run, right? To get into his face uh, and start the spins. So obviously, if you're closer, it's faster. Um, you want to either crouch cancel or switch weapons. Both of those things will cancel the um, slowdown, the slow-mo of parrying the laser. Yeah, see right here, I barely had to move to be able to get into position. Now you just go for double hits. You do like, what, it's like seven maybe hits and then slam. Now right here, you want to throw this claymore. Oh, it's it's six. I think I just counted that. That's six hits. Either way, six hit, six hits slam. Here you want to throw the claymore at Calamity's face. Uh, if you throw it at his like belly, there's this weird invincibility that can happen. So just throw it at his face. Uh, I like to jump cancel this, and as long as I throw it at his face, it it usually works. You don't get um, I framed by Calamity, and then here, switch to Ancient Arrows, and you want to strafe left, right? So you, you back up a little bit, and then strafe left as you're drawing the bow. Calamity will always move to the left, or, well, maybe not always move to the left, but, like, Calamity's head will always be, like, slightly left of when you back up, so... You should always be able to hit this headshot. And, you know, make sure you hit this headshot. You see, I, I like... Well, I guess it's hard to see, but um, right here... Okay, so I'm here. I back up. And then Calamity's head is to the left. And then I just go shoot it. Yeah, you're super close, so you should always be able to hit that. Do three uh, ancient arrow headshots, and then switch to bomb arrows. And here, you know this should be very easy because the ancient arrows stun him, so you should always be able to hit 
there was headshots every time. And then the one bomber after is also very easy to hit because he's stunned. If you have two bomberos left, you know, just do two bombero headshots. One of them is very easy. The other one isn't too bad. But yeah, that should end the phase. If you don't end the phase there, if you don't have enough damage, just switch to boomerang and throw it. If you missed um, one too many bomb arrows, one throw should be enough. If you missed more than that, then you need to probably go in and do a couple of attacks. Okay, so if you did all of this correctly, right, if you had a fast phase one, you should always get either instant laser or a grounded attack and then a laser, right? And to force that laser, you need to run away. So um, if you don't get instant laser here, I get instant laser. But if you don't, you want to move forward um, to engage Calamity. Calamity will give you an attack. And then after the attack starts, just sprint to the to the wall right because you this is like the beginning where forcing a laser is about being as far away as possible so yeah essentially aggro him to get the attack and then just sprint away to wait for the laser and then once you have the laser you can continue like normal but here i get instant laser when you get instant laser if you just move forward at him uh, without moving right so you can see I target and then switch to EOD I mean you need to switch to EOD you can do the parry animation cancel by switching to EOD my muscle memory is for crouch canceling here but essentially I actually start off like around here and then I move to the right this makes it so that calamity re-aims if you don't do that calamity can sometimes just whiff like if you just stood still and then tried to parry it there's sometimes calamity will just whiff it'll shoot above you but by moving right he has to re-aim his laser and you'll always be able to parry it no matter how close you are well, i guess you can be too close but that's always a problem it's not just an instant laser issue. So here, move to the right, move up, because you see how close I stand? And that's just so that I just sprint for a little bit, and then I'm close enough to get the hits to start the sunlock. Um, here, I think the way you get a double hit is by uh, essentially sprint, attack, and then you want to target Calamity um, after you start the attack. So it'll it'll get two hits. Not a big deal. And honestly, if you're not ready for it, that can throw you off and kill the run. Because if you accidentally do three hits, then that's really bad. But yeah, here are two hits. Um, you kind of walk a little this way and then start the spin. Link will automatically um start facing calamity's main body so normally here if you if you move link properly you want to get the double hits like here uh you can actually break the eod on this slam that means you did it optimally. Uh, you got enough hits in, and then if you break the EOD on this slam, you just switch to Claymore, get an extra hit in, and then start the next spin. But here, because I didn't, I just throw it like normal. Switch over. Now for stunlock, you can lose a surprising amount of time to a slow stunlock, like a like really bad hits so this is a part you probably want to practice um it's like the same thing as water blight triple hits right you're essentially trying to hit 
the spear uh, for one hit, and then the main body for two. Uh, obviously, you need to start the spin after this spear um, like is already in the ground. And you, you kind of want to start the spin when you have like three quarters stamina. But yeah, essentially what I do here... Extra hit and then you walk out this way. So here, I'll put that out. You walk out this way towards the spear. Kind of in a... Here's the main body, right? Here's the spear. You see I'm walking like in a straight line that way. You walk this way so that link is starts to spin this way. And that way, um, yeah, he'll get the double hits on the body. And then you want to essentially walk out this way. And then once he starts spinning, you walk back this way slightly. Right? Just position himself in the, or position link in the middle. So it's the same thing, just now in Calamity instead. And then yeah, you know, extra hit. Uh, at this point, um, I generally check to see how much health Calamity has, and also like you can count there's an optimal number of spins here uh, i get it in this run technically i think you can do the stun lock so that you end it with just the last spin instead of having to do an extra attack at the end but i, I don't get that like it's not that good in this run but okay let's see so normally you should be able to get one eod spin now one Royal Claymore spin, two Royal Claymore spins, three Royal Claymore spins, and then you should be able to finish it right there without an extra spin. So that's three spins with the Royal Claymore and one spin with the EOD. If you have to take an extra spin or more than that, you're actually losing quite a bit of time. So yeah, make sure to practice getting those triple hits. Uh, here, so yeah, I, I look at the end to see how much health Calamity has, and if it's two hits worth, I just do a jump attack. I think you can also do a, a Claymore throw if it's two hits away, but I don't do that. Not really sure why I don't, but I like the the jump attack better. I guess it feels flashier. Um, and if you're three hits away, then a uh, weapon throw won't be enough. So you need to like do one attack and then a jump attack. Right here, that's what I chose to do. Cause it was three hits. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Dark Beast Ganon, essentially an auto scroller, can't really mess up. At this point, you want the, I mean, the bow is going to be broken, which means that you don't have to menu over to the, the bow of light. This is important because the pre-fire cues I use are based on the audio, and if you have to do any menuing at all, um, it'll mess them up. So this is based on having your bow broken. Yeah. <clears throat> Essentially, the, the audio is playing. It's always going to be at the same point. Every single time you enter Dark Beast, it's consistent. So you just learn when to, to shoot, when the light spots will appear. So this one. 
there's um this is Tapir taught me this. Um I think he might actually have switched to a different queue, but this is the one he taught me. Essentially it's on a certain note, that's when you start drawing the bow. Um so you wanna make sure also that Link's like distance from Dark Beast is, you know, somewhat the same every time. It's not a big deal. But yeah, essentially same distance and then when you hear a certain note on uh on one of the lines, uh that's when you draw your bow. Da -na 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 -na. So there's that's the that's the line I'm listening for. Da -na 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 -na. And it's there's the high note and then the one after. Na so that it's na 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 and then the 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 second note. So you've got the high one and then middle note and then the the lower one. And it's that middle note that's when you start drawing bow. Just listen to it. Or maybe it's the other one. Okay. I may be getting it confused, but one of those notes you definitely want to... <laughs> it's either the middle one or the, the one after. Okay, the reason I'm confused is because... In, in other categories where you don't break the bow... You have to use a slightly different cue. So I think it's the second, it's like the, the second one in any percent. And then in other categories, it's the third note. But I might be slightly wrong about this one. Mess around with, with it. I mean, it's pretty easy. You just practice it a couple times. Also, something to note is that reloading in Dark Beast, or like dying and redoing Dark Beast, you're going to mess up the audio keys. So you can't just retry it by, like, dying. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that, but... It's kind of something I, I do in the run and then it's a little harder to like be sure of it here okay so here now this this pre-fire depends on whether or not you hit the previous one we're just going to assume you hit the previous one if you didn't, then it throws everything off for this second set of shots. But there's this, like, there's a big note here that when you hit that note, that's when the spot appears. So you want to fire the bow so that the arrow hits when that note hits. It's that da na, well, like that first note. Uh, yeah, you see it, the lights appear when that that note hits. So just fire slightly before that, and you should hit it. Now, interestingly. This, okay, so this third belly shot, um, there's phase one is the, the side, phase two is the other side, phase three is the belly shot, and phase four is the, the last eye. But the belly shot is always, this one's actually like the easiest um, pre-fire, because the cue is always the same. Um, and you're like right there, it's pretty lenient because like you can shoot into the belly and um 
if you shoot too early, sometimes the the arrow like will fly through the belly a bit before like disappearing. So that one's pretty generous. Also, the reason the audio cue is always the same, like it's uniform, is because the, the music resets. So here, after you do the second set of shots, you'll if you listen, you'll hear the music like resets. Right there. That's when it reset. And so now it's it's uniform. It's back to In um, in set. Okay, I use a different cue than Tapir for this. And honestly, I don't really know. My cue is kind of vague, but this is a pretty lenient shot, so you don't really need the most like solid cue. Uh, essentially, there's a line here. It's kind of halfway. There's like a held note, and it's kind of halfway in there. Da na na, and it's halfway in that na note. So da na na, and you kind of just shoot like halfway in that. So let's let's play that again. <laughs> It's pretty lenient. Um, Tapir has a cue that's like you count. There's like this note that gets hit like six times. You count the sixth one and that's when you fire. But uh, I could never count. Um, I just, just couldn't do it. So I came up with a different one. <laughs> and yeah, uh, just I don't know. Fire it at some point. That one's pretty lenient. Now here, um, you just ride out far enough that you don't like shoot the tusks. Um, but you know, not too far away, because if you ride out too far, then you know you're unnecessarily far away from Dark Beast. And so it'll take longer for your arrow to travel to hit the eye. So, I don't know. It's not a big deal either way. At this point, just make sure you hit the shot. Uh, yeah. Wait for the eye to open. Jump off the horse. Um, I like to pre-aim the bow. And then you'll get used to this timing, but you can like jump pretty early. You need to wait for Zelda, of course, to start talking before you can shoot. But yeah, that's the run. Uh, it's where it's GG's. Okay, that was an hour and 40 minutes. Wow. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, there are a lot. A lot of things in Castle Blades Calamity. Um, definitely, I think a lot of people slack on the uh, the end game practice, so it's very easy to just play through plateau over and over. Right, it's the start of the run. You get so much practice with plateau, but you've also got to go and practice castle blights and calamity right that's like half the run so if you're only ever practicing the first half you're missing out on so much time save that you could be getting um so definitely recommend doing castle ils uh just like run through castle over and over until you can consistently get a certain time that you're happy with um that definitely helped me when we found the new or when we like came up with the new castle route. I think what set me 
like apart uh like why i was able to capitalize so well on it is just because i spent so long doing castle isles just kept doing it until i could consistently get a certain certain time it's like at the time i think i was i was set on trying to be able to get like sub four castle every time but yeah i practice this pays off um and i think that castle blights calamity like the second half of the run is way cooler than plateau um castle specifically i think that's my favorite split but yeah hopefully you found something in this helpful thank you for watching i will be posting other or like i'll have other resources in the description yeah probably make more tutorials as well later so if you want more of that then i don't know subscribe or something